The independent planets formed from the disillusioned and far-off worlds of the 34 Tauri 2020 cluster to oppose the Alliance. This was an attempt to organise the planets into a resistance to fight for independence from the core worlds, and as such, a mashup of the societies of its member planets. Hello all, Rick here and this index is looking into the myriad of planets that made up the Outer Rim and Border Worlds of the Firefly series. The Unification War was fought between the Union of Allied Planets and the Independent Planets from 2506 to 2511, and marked the end of the Independent Movement, followed by the official re-establishment of Alliance control over these systems. However, with the distance from the Central Planets, these frontier worlds are Alliance territory in the loosest sense of the word, and many who inhabit them feel that the Alliance views them with all the disdain of a soiled boot. First off, let's define these worlds in basics. The star cluster that the Firefly series takes place in is a series of star systems orbiting a central white star. Those planets that orbit the white star are known as the civilized central worlds, while thems that orbit the outer stars are the border and rim worlds. The entire cluster was terraformed beginning in the 2200s from colony ships sent from Earth that was. Civilization was settled on the inner worlds first and then humanity spread out from there, terraforming the myriad of terrestrial moons and planets. This means that the inner planets are more established, being far older and have a myriad of cities and a high level of technological development. The outer planets by comparison are far less developed and some to this day are still undergoing terraforming. The terraforming process itself is very labour intensive and often creates unexpected problems, such as releasing toxic compounds. Judging by the stable state of the central worlds, it seems that these issues will eventually settle, but this doesn't help the people on those colonies in the now. In the early days, settlers were dropped off on terraformed worlds with little provisions. This lack of support, inevitably, bred resentment. Each of the outer planets is ruled by a governor or a magistrate in the case of the Moon, who, ever since the Unification War, has been selected by the Alliance for their pro-unification views. There is usually a token presence in the form of patrols from the central planets, as Alliance vessels seek to maintain law in the skies. But for the most part, the individual affairs of the planets are seen to by the local governments, who then answer to the Alliance Parliament based on Londinium. The Parliament sets system-wide policy and law, with the Prime Minister at the top. Parliamentary seats are voted for by the communities, and those who wish to run are often those who curry favour and influence with the Alliance. Currently, there is a law in effect for 10 years that prevents former independent supporters from running for Parliament, a holdover from the Unification War. Most governors or even local town mayors employ private security firms that have an alliance sanction to operate for security to compensate for this lack of oversight. However, as these firms effectively answer to the local authority, their actions are often at the behest of thems that pay. This is even truer for the unlicensed mercenary bands. The alliance credit is the technical currency, but the independents used the script. Scripts are a stand-in for tender and therefore mostly similar, however they lack an official exchange rate and only work in the closed groups who accept the script. With the fall of the independent planets, the script was mostly abandoned. The less than frequent presence of the Alliance in the border and rim worlds leads to the barter system being implemented as frequently as actual coin, as well as numerous local currencies. Speaking of coin, advanced technology is far more expensive the further out you go due to the uneven distribution of it and the scarce presence of individuals with the know-how to maintain such. This meant that there was a substantial amount of so-called old tech in play the further out you went. And I mean old. Aside from the odd railway, transportation in the rim often included horses and the lack of an electrical grid on most room worlds meant that power was a regulated commodity. It's not unusual for residents of worlds like Zhang Ying or Triumph to use tools and the like that we see nowadays to accomplish everyday tasks. Salvage and handmade gear were also a common sight. 
This led to the rise of entertainments that didn't necessitate power, such as cards, sports, dance, and other un-YouTube friendly activities from reputable business establishments. This coalition of planets mixed the cultures together, but they were a blend even before that. This originates from the exodus of colony ships from Earth that was, diluted after years of cohabitation and travel. The clearest signs of this are in the common tongue, which is a mixture of English and Mandarin, based on the majority of the two powers that launched the migration hundreds of years ago. On the outer planets, it's not unusual to find a blend of cultures together without even a second glance given. This combined with the strong inclination to old tech and a rustic way of life means that the worlds, further from the core, have a very frontier feel to them. Reminiscent of the 19th century American frontier, this combined with the early state of most freshly terraformed planets being rather arid, made it feel very much like the Old West. However, you could walk into a wooden saloon to find a geisha waiting tables while the crowd is entertained by traditional belly dancing. You could walk the docks of a spaceport past the myriad of ships seeking passengers and waltz right by street performers of Japanese kabuki. Their clothing styles were equally diverse, especially where fashion was concerned with kimonos and kurta seen alongside blazers and bonnets. Not all the border worlds were as rustic as they appeared, however, this is the 26th century after all, and many technologies were blended with archaic construction methods, so a wooden shack might have a holographic window or two, while many papers and documents were in fact interactive scrawling pages of text. The verse-wide network was called the Cortex and acted as the communications and news relay for the entire systems. As you may have suspected by now, the further out from the core you go, the spottier the connection can be, leading to common blackouts and limited communications. Many on the inner worlds hold the opinion that the rim worlds and even the border planets are a lawless land of chaos rife with criminal activities and unsavoury types. While they're not exactly wrong, your everyday citizen is merely trying to get by with little concern for what goes on beyond them and theirs. A sense of community permeates the settlements and towns, an ideal that the independent movement was quick to call on to unify these worlds against the central planets. Independent planets established a militia of volunteers, colloquially referred to as the Browncoats who received orders from a high command which worked with the high council, the would-be government for the independent colonies. The Unification War was the first major conflict for the Verse, and they were outmanned from the start. The Browncoats had a moral righteousness in their cause, but it couldn't combat the scale of the Alliance. They initially opened strong with guerrilla tactics and their home advantage, but couldn't maintain the offensive. Many regarded the Battle of Serenity Valley on Hera as the beginnings of the end for the independent planets, as surrender soon followed, along with the dissolution of their fledgling government. After the war, the Alliance offered to help them rebuild, and they did begin to help with reconstruction and relief supplies. However, efforts were curtailed and eventually ended when many in the core worlds decided that they'd rather spend their money on themselves than a former enemy. This continues the cycle of the frontiersmen and women harbouring resentment or ambivalence for the Alliance and its central planets. Many consider those who live there to be stuck up, arrogant and born with a silver spoon in their mouth. In a way, that's just as biased as those they claim to be so different from. The myriad of problems faced by the settlers of the outer planets, alongside the terraforming efforts, include criminal activities, weather conditions, a lack of a steady supply chain, a lack of medicine, and Reva attacks. The fact that most of the prestigious educational institutes are located in the central worlds also means a lack of specialised professionals further away from the core. Eventually, as is the way with frontiers, the planets will be tamed and made habitable for future generations. However, that does nothing to alleviate the problems suffered by those alive to establish the frontier itself. By the time the Alliance reaches those worlds to colonise in earnest, there may be a social divide too great to overcome, leading to another war in time. 
after working so hard to overcome the many language, cultural and social barriers that Earth that was had in order to settle the verse in the first place, it would be a huge shame to see new walls erected due to neglect. Thanks for listening to this Index on the Independent Systems. While gone, the planets and peoples that it stood for remain. If you liked this and want to see more, let me know as I was thinking of doing a breakdown on the Firefly verse itself, but as for the next cultural index, I have two options for you to choose from. Either the Hive of the Geonosians from Star Wars, or the more social Denobulans of Star Trek. You can vote in the comments below, and until next video, thanks again for watching. And goodbye.